45.15 Let's see what we can do with this um, particular game All pretty simple, just develop the knights Ready for the castling Castle, castle, yeah, castles Stopping my knight from jumping to open up the white square bishop. Oh, the dancing knight blocking the bishop for a moment. Could we take advantage of that blocking the bishop for a moment? He's very concerned about our knight and bishop controlling this square here. Should not put the frighteners on him. Don't know if, if we push, his pawn takes, knight takes. Is that a nice position for us? You know, I don't know if it is. But what we do like to do is bring the bishop up. I think that's a mistake when they don't take the bishop. It's either the opening up or the knight's gone onto the rim a little bit. Yeah, it's tacking this bishop, but it's uh, not going to be a fruitful position for it. Because that's a bad bishop anyway, so we could just let that go. focus on the kink area could treat it like it's been taken by actually taking this pawn <sighs> bad bishop bad bishop bring it back keeping the diagonal then it just pushes these pawns down bishop's got nowhere to go so put, yeah, let's just bring it back It's gone wide. He's wanting to sit on the outpost thing here. He's wanting this as an outpost. Um, I think he's put himself there, but he's not got any support on. And I do like pressure in the king area. My queen is faced onto his knight. I get to his area. I get a pawn for my troubles. Let's take. I'm getting into the practice of this um, capturing a pawn type thing to gather the same type of piece that is available happens more so with the bishops recently actually seeing like they pin throughs to pieces and things so it's quite nice being able to spot those types of things because it's the smallest of advantage advantages such as having that extra pawn also improving your position so we'll just capture here Queen's come down dead quick. I don't think there was an immediate threat on his area at all. <laughs> so that speed may have cost them um, position. Because we're probably looking at Rook Rover. You know, Rook Rover's coming across here. So we need space. Because we want to attack the King area. His pawn takes, Rook can move up still. Double up the Rooks. He's not actually doing that. He wants the Queen away. But again, we're winning pawns. 
could take the pawn could come up here just to condense his area a bit more make him a bit panicky his pawn takes his pawn takes well we've got the queen here on the diagonal rook can take and put pressure on the queen queen goes back queen takes I'm condensing the queen up it's protecting this area rook comes up then we double the rooks up and we're putting more pressure onto his area because the diagonal with the bishop as well it's probably going to yes so he's going to condense and protect I don't need to take it mm -hmm. don't need to but I think taking big guns off should work he's moving quick but his position is not good for taking quick let's capture here <coughs> pressure that's where bishop doubling the rooks potentially getting the knight involved he's attacking the pawn but that again is not fruitful because we can defend the pawn with a simple pawn we've got the attack on the king area we want to maintain focus on that now he's doubling up but he's why is his rook actually targeting because our bishop has got this so our rook can go here so i don't know why that rook was moved so we'll put a check on and oh they've resigned okay it did i don't think it needed to turn out like that um I think they had stuff to do at this pay was that night move yeah the night move took away any not hopes but it made their position weaker towards their king area and as you could see the opponent did get a bit fretful then and we just pushed forward to try and put more pressure on the king area hmm okay playing another longer game 30 minute zero increment having a look at my own personal calculation I'm going to attack the king for obvious reasons of it's attacking the king simple as that the idea behind that for me personally is that the white squared bishop as white is usually the bad bishop especially if I've opened e4 so we can keep that bishop hanging there for a little bit with the x-ray through to the king don't have any problems there we're probably safer going castling reason being because the queen has access to here we don't really want any sort of funny business you know coming across here then the bishop then stopping the king from castling and all that type of stuff so it's safer getting the king to safety so the knight's out there is a school of thought that he can push here onto the knight pawn comes down knight takes then the knight is actually on the knight as well putting pressure again because the knight is pinned by the bishop so you could do that it's not forced to take he could just move his knight out of the way i like developing but i also like trying out things so pushing the pawn smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong potentially dropping here to attack the pawn i suppose we can then take the pawn so we're gravitating up towards the king area and making a bit of space around the king area to put pressure on the king or the king area sounds simple when we're applying it but i tell you there's players out there that can play this um, answer process absolutely fantastically it's just brilliant the way that they do it it's not so brilliant when it's done on me but i know what they're doing but sometimes you just can't stop it you can't stop that snowball effect which is quite painful to see especially when they deliver it really 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 well So all we can do is keep practicing the answer process as best possible 
and having a look at what moves allow us to get to those positions rather than as we've mentioned before fencing around with pawns and and pieces attacking non non critical areas or non essential uh, pieces so they're in a nice deep thing it is a long game so we can allow people to you know take a longer time with their moves so what i'll do is uh, while they're going in a deep thing i'll pause the um, the game until they make a move so they have made their move they've moved the knight back so it does allow us to open up space around their king a simple capture would suffice you could push again onto the uh, knight but then i suppose in a way let's have a look at it we could push the pawn for the pawn to actually capture and that opens up space around his king area but our queen doesn't have a direct access as yet towards that area so would it be worthwhile doing does look nice up pawn takes king's all area on this side I suppose the knight could come here attacking this square allowing the space for the queen but does he block it off knight comes here then the pawn drops down onto the knight so if the pawn drops down onto the knight the queen can go here putting a check on the king causing them a bit of problems but if this pawn dropped rather than attacking the um rather than attacking the knight so we've gone one they've taken we've brought the knight up but they're clever and they go here instead what do we do queen can come here that would be an interesting situation wouldn't it it's looking better by the minute i'm actually going to go for it <laughs> oh and the person oh no don't tell me they've lost left the game no no did they see what we were going to be doing they don't even have to take though they can push the pawn down actually now i'm thinking but if they push the pawn down we get a, a knight a minor piece it genuinely does look like they've left the game they've got 23 seconds left oh oh that would have been a beautiful thing i wanted to take that through have to look on the analysis see if it would have worked so it doesn't look like they're coming back i'll pause the video well sadly they didn't come back so i'm going to go to the analysis and see if it had potential that particular um direction Put these things on well the gauge bar is just showing it as a draw really it's not showing them um, any great advantage at all <laughs> right yeah okay so i was singing the praises of it but it, it didn't seem to have any legs and then i said i was bringing the knight here didn't i oh he's got some defense and black is winning black is better yeah because we were going to bring the queen there but as soon as he brings the knight there so what did they um, leave the game for then if they had potentially had something like this ah, okay so that that wouldn't work of this pawn here so if, I, if they had done something like magic i'm playing against the computer so i won't, i'm not going to win so there was a defense against it so that's good enough for me to know for future tense in terms of um don't try and over egg it obviously he had a defense basically that side there i'm not going to get this same position again but the concept is the same in terms of look a little bit deeper with the um calculation i think i only did about two steps I may, maybe even up to three so that probably warranted a fourth calculation to the end of it interesting game so by now you will you'll have seen that every chess game that we play the opening part of the game may look the same but then as you start transitioning with your end game opening through the moves 
there's slight differences to how the opponent plays how we then react to that opponent so we're going to capture the knight here We do have a free pawn here, but how free is it? It's classed as a poison pawn because the queen comes through and then it presses onto this pawn here. So don't get too happy just because we've caught a pawn. Let's reposition, see if we... So they're actually attacking with the pawn first. Um, so they may miss out on actually winning the pawn back. So we'll bring this here. Now they've created a little bit of space here and here for our pieces to start attacking. So those are the sort of target areas that we'll be starting to look at with the end game opening process. As you can see, the queen's come now attacking the pawn, but I think it's too late to the party now. The knight can't come out now because this pawn is blocked, so it can't put a two on one here. So he's going with an x-ray with the bishop, but again, too late to the party, looking at putting a two on one on this pawn. Instead, he's gone with the pawn. So we can bring the rook here, which is going to be opposite the queen. So that's going to be a bit frightening because the king is behind the queen. So they're having to rethink, I think, about the situation. Because if he takes, then the rook takes. And if he doesn't take, we can take here and the rook is still facing the queen. So the queen is probably going to have to take our rook. Or they lose their queen. So we got here pretty quickly, but it's a move order thing. You could see the opponent attempting to attack the correct area, which was the pawn, but the move order was slightly done wrong. So now they're moving really quick to try and make some recompense for that. So we can take our time and they're probably going to resign any second now. If we take the pawn, his bishop it comes alive. So I suppose we could leave the pawn there, but then if we did, he takes, and then we can't really take it back. So we might as well take the pawn off the board. Going to push up now. Yeah, see how fast they're moving? So let's push up. So he's gone and castled, so that's what they wanted to do. Go and castle. Could develop the bishop out. Just because we've got a queen up doesn't mean we've won the game. We've still got to play the game. Bring the bishop out, developing attacking towards this area now there's no need going to this area like we said at the beginning because now the king is over here so a smaller piece attacking the higher piece is attacking our knight looking to condense us down with a small pawn is there anything that we can attack in the meantime we could attack his bishop but he's got like two two pieces on there three really rook and the knight so we can bring the knight back it's heading towards the king area so he's coming down with the pawns, shooting down dead fast. So we have the idea of bringing this knight here, potentially to come to there, start squeezing the king, move this knight and get the queen involved up towards the king's, king's area. So it seems like a good enough idea for the end game opening. And he's pushing more pawns. I'm trying not to avoid them as best possible. I'm not ignoring them. I'm going to continue with the process, like we said, bringing the knight, attacking the bishop. In reality, we're wanting to get our queen, get the knight involved up here. If the bishop moves, get the knight up here, get the queen across, targeting the king. So he's brought the rook. So the rook has no place in the center of the board, as we already know. So if I do take his knight, he's got a knight on there as well. So his knight could take. Is there some sort of intermediate move that I can do? I could bring my bishop here attacking the rook to say, well, what are you actually doing? Smaller piece attacking the higher piece can't be wrong. Keep it simple. Hopefully they lose a bit of tempo if they move it. Sometimes they don't have to move a piece. It could be there setting you up. And look at that beautiful rook, rook attack there absolutely fantastic okay so what we're going to do is just capture this bishop knight takes and what we do have is the queen that can come here with a check on his king 
So we'll take that action. So opened up a bit of space around the king area, the other way around. So obviously the king is coming here. Could bring our rook across. Just realizing we've only got one rook. <laughs> okay. So we need to jostle a little bit. It's not going to be too hard. Just a matter of getting the knight here. Now if they forget themselves and they take what's guarding that area, the queen. So the queen can take the rook. Oh, and he's taken our bishop. But there's a problem with them taking the bishop. In that it doesn't really improve their position. Rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board. So we're going to bring our knight up. Which gives pressure on this area here. If they forget themselves. So the opponent's doing nice targeting per se, but we're looking at improving our position on the board because of the end game opening. And the slight difference in thought process is that we want to end the game and the opponent wants to bake it. They want to sort of show off taking pieces off the board left, right and center, and eventually then think about checkmate at some stage. So there's a massive difference between the end game opening. We want to end the game, so how do we do it? We've got less pieces on the board than the opponent. Uh, we do have a flexible piece, which is the queen. So he's now attacking the knight. So the knight does have places to go. Queen does have places to go. Yep, so if we go here and attack, the king can't go here. So oops, keep hitting the keyboard with the thing. So if we go here with a check, he has to go to this square here. Then our queen can go here with a check. Then the king has to come to this far side here. So we're reducing down their pieces at, at a bit at a time. Then when they go there, obviously, um, where's our queen? Where's our queen? Let me just go through that again. We go here, king moves. Do, 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 do. We take, king moves there. So the king is on this square. So it's not that it can't put a checkmate per se on it. So maybe one move, but then the knight, the rook takes the knight. So we're going to be in this position here, but then we can put a check on the king. And then it would be a checkmate after that because the queen would come here. So that's how that's going to work. So capture, we want to end the game. We don't want to just take pieces off the board. So this is the process of ending the game and the calculation that I've, I've just done just to ensure that we do actually get the end of the game should see us through quite nicely smallest of differences between strategically taking pieces off the board and the end game opening okay so it's all but over now really which is a good thing it's a good thing that we're practicing this the king can only go to the corner and then that will be checkmate and the poor rook and the bishop look at them chomping at the bit to actually take the rook the knight but because of the position on the board it's not really very helpful okay so that's end game opening with the answer okay 45 15. let's just um, get positioned as you can see, all the players that I've played recently playing 45 15, they're playing really fast. Oh, let's uh, bring this bishop out here. And that's not the. And this is why you bring this. the bishop out so you can catch the knight. The opponent was more to set to actually finish that move. So what I'm doing is I'm going to accept the take back on this occasion. So that demonstrates this is why you bring the bishop out because of that knight process there I also end up in that other position which I really don't like which does favor um, white so where am I going now uh, da, 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 da. I think I'm going on the inside because of the threat of the bishop coming here pinning through to the queen we do have the option of pushing the pawn here it's just and he's still going for it so he's obviously going for the knight for a knight and a bishop for a rook situation are they actually going to do it yes they're going to do it they've done it okay so that's um okay just move the king to the side he was wanting to get that off all the way throughout the game 
and they've resigned. <laughs> See, it's not a fruitful thing. You can make it work. Um, you know, the knight for a bishop, and a, you know, for the rook. Um, you, you, I think you still have to have a bit of skill if you're going to do it, and if you're ready and prepared for the pattern following it then all well and good but obviously our opponent wasn't so they've resigned okay 10 minute game so practice the the answer end game opening okay so that's a nice attack with the bishop just um, as usual bring this through here see if there's anything different we can do opponent's gone safe so we'll develop the knight attacking the pawn and develop our bishop so we can go and castle and we will go and castle so the opponent's playing pretty somber so that's allowing us to get our bed sorted playing as black you know it's nice to get your bed sorted or be allowed to have that time to get your bed sorted because white has that moment moment where they can basically go i'm going to go all in because they move first so if they lose that tempo in terms of going all in and they want to sit back and do rope a that's where black tends to gain a little bit of an advantage so actually going to come here with the bishop nice and simple probably pushing the pawn i think oh it's not actually i, I wouldn't have done that myself but let's go here we're attacking the bishop and then the knight can come round again do the whirlwind catching two pieces with one in a sense and you know again I, w I wouldn't have done that particular move it's taken the knight our bishop can take his bishop or we can take the knight and we're still on the bishop so we're not going to lose out in any sense so let's just grab here if they forget themselves we take the bishop for free sometimes they do sometimes they don't but they're taking a long time over this so you're thinking well they have actually forgotten that their bishop is no they haven't so he's re repositioned targeting through to our king but it's not got any protection on it so again it could be challenged so they can lose tempo and we can make some inroads into um, proper development we do have two on one as well that we can put on with this bishop here so i'm going to bring that with a discover check on their queen so we've got two pieces attacking he's got the queen being attacked so obviously and he's moved the queen off to protect the pawn that's not what they're designed for really so that's going that's got to hurt that's got to hurt their position on the board really a queen coming to protect a pawn here like this because if the knight did take or even if the bishop took it's like going to be if the bishop takes i'm on the queen so then if the rook takes then this is like a almost a back rank but the queen is there guarding so is there a way of actually getting that queen away from there you see if we went with the knight then if we went with the knight and say if the rook did take then the bishop took the bishop is on the queen so we'd think he would take and then the queen could go here so let's go with the knight he could go with his bishop attacking our king you know this pawn here but he has done that so let's go here if the queen takes then it's back rank stuff going on because they move there dead quick with the rook <clears throat> so he does actually take so there's nothing else but well, suppose his bishop can go back yep but in essence we're like the exchange up from that position and now we're going to take the bishop here as well so they probably might resign soon so this is why i'm delaying his queen is looking to take this pawn here but we're going to get a minor piece out of this situation so plus three and up the exchange from the end game opening process got the queen putting pressure on the king area we're allowing pieces to get taken because we're, we're improving our position on the board so next thing we're probably looking at is uh, owning the file i mean it's got two pawns actually queen can take this pawn here in the center or this pawn here he'll be on our bishop so we can move the bishop to the side attacking the queen making space for the rooks to own the file here and put pressure on that side 
So there's a few things going on there, just keeping it nice and simple. Be prepared for the fact that one of these pawns is going to go, so I'm not going to be shocked or surprised. But then we do have the element of, depending on what they do, bringing the bishop here to protect this pawn, I suppose. That's probably the better move, because bringing a rook to then attack does have the option of getting the queen out of the way but he's not even doing any of that he's protecting the pawn here because what I was going to say was if he did take then the rook came and put pressure on we would have pressure on this here the queen could take and take the rook off so if they're in this massive defence mode it does allow us a little bit of time to bring a rook to here so that we can face off the queen or face off the king area Again, we do have this pawn that is being attacked by the queen, so let's just bring this rook here for now. Putting some sort of threat on this area, you know, to come here. I know he does have the queen there, but I don't think the queen will stay there for too long. Was he looking to try and exchange the queen off as well? But now we've got the rook there, I don't think they can do that. So I'm trying to get help for my queen. I think probably some sort of pawn push to free the rook up and accept the fact that the knight's getting taken. Yeah, my pawn move of some sort. Okay. Could continue with the rook coming here. And then we've got like a two on one on this knight, but I'm not gonna sacrifice my queen, I don't think. So let's have a look at why they've pushed that pawn. I mean, it's blocking my dark square bishop. Um, could bring the bishop here. I want to do a bit something a bit more proactive. I don't want to get trapped. I'm gonna bring the rook here, like we said. And then bring this other rook on this side. And then if this pawn hasn't gone, bring this rook here. Really depends on what the opponent does. So this is one of those um, situations where you ca you could overpress and then you've done all this beautiful work and then end you end up falling flat on your face. If the king does move, we take the bishop. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there something really though? Let's see. going to bring the rook here for something just to make the move it's keeping pieces guarded and protected this pawn obviously like I say it can go can bring the bishop here blocking the diagonal for the king idea being we can bring this rook there if it's allowed and then bring this rook there so then we've got three on there so then he won't be able to support with the king. So I'm going to press onto the queen. Inadvertently protecting the pawn, but I wasn't too concerned about that. I have to be very careful because, you know, his queen can come shooting here. Then looking for a back rank checkmate. Yeah, so those are, oh, he's almost done it. So the queen can't give us too much trouble there. If they'd have gone here, then we couldn't really go here because he would get type of back rank checkmate situation. So I think we, well, in fact, we don't even need, yeah, we, yeah, we do. Right, before that, let's talk it through. Yeah, we go up and then his queen comes down and takes this pawn. Then we take with a check his king moves here. We've got three pieces, big pieces, and then we go with a check. Then his king is dancing free. Got that pot on there, queen, check, mate. Because he can't go up or down. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward then, let's go. Again, calculation helping us with the end game opening swarming the king basically so we have way too many pieces on the back we don't think we've got a back rank checkmate properly he's come down with it like we said so one 
to checkmate. Excellent calculation. Maximum three we went to there, which was good. So end game opening, just staying focused on the end game rather than dancing around, um, fencing and baking stuff. 